Week 2, Lesson 4, Mansreel's The Sun. Franz Mansreel was born in 1889 and died in 1972. He's a Flemish artist who worked mainly in France. After World War I, he created wordless books using wood etchings. In 1918, he released The Passions of a Man, a story about a young man who was born into poverty, drinks with his co-workers, and becomes self-educated by reading books. He leads a revolt against his employer and is killed for it. He wrote 10 more wordless novels between 1919 and 1964, one such novel being The Sun, a wordless novel that we're going to take a quick look at. We start off with the protagonist, possibly Mansreel, sitting at the desk. He's overlooking some buildings and the sun is shining on him. Similar angle. The man is sleeping while the little man, probably an astral projection of himself, is reaching out for the sun. Oh, the little man fell out the window. If we look past the chimney smoke here, we see that there's a hand reaching up from the bottom. A crowd gathers around the man that fell. The man is rubbing his head, a topless woman is looking at him from her window. The man points at the sun, and the crowd cheers on. They follow him up the stairs of a building. He's on the rooftop, reaching out for the sun, a group of men in hot pursuit. And they pull him away from the smokestack. Now the group is holding the man as they bring him towards an authority figure, probably a factory boss. In the bottom right corner, we see the man is literally getting kicked out of the building and is brought into a crowded street. A man in the limo, or a taxi, is holding a glowing object. Our protagonist seems to be asking him about it. We see exhaust from the traffic as our protagonist walks beside a vehicle. He is now alone in the streets, left behind by traffic, and the buildings lean over him, almost blocking out the sun. But through learning, worship, technology, looking up women's dresses, the man becomes trapped, imprisoned, if you will. But that won't stop him. He climbs the chimney to get as close as he can to the sun, the men behind him pulling him down as they send him to a brothel and throw him in a room with a very curvy woman. And sex was had, I think. I don't know why he's hiding under the bed. Maybe it's some kinky thing? Oh, look! Over the bed is a picture of his son behind a topless woman. Time to go! To the fair, where he jumps off a ride and flings himself towards the sun. And fails miserably. He fights against the crowd. And runs towards the setting sun. Notice the man with the kite in the middle of the picture. Because our protagonist grabs that kite and uses it to fly towards the sun, but gets caught in the tree and has everyone laugh at him. After the group gets a ladder to help him down, the man walks towards the sun again, the group laughing at the man. One of the guys is pointing at his head, probably signifying that our protagonist isn't quite right in the brain. He climbs a tree. Symbolically, the man is shown higher here than anywhere else in the story so far. Nature has taken him above the buildings of man, as he can almost reach the sun. White birds, possibly a stand-in for angels, circle the man. They carry the man towards the sun, but as we see below, there is a hunter with a gun aiming at him. Maybe he's trying to save the man from the birds, or maybe the hunter is just hungry. The man falls towards the water. A woman, I'm assuming it's a woman as she seems to be wearing a dress, reaches out her hands either in panic or to catch him. As the boat docks, the man sees the tower and climbs to the top of it. Where? He gets hit by lightning. He falls down a chimney and ends up surrounded by fire. 
as people in the house drop to their knees, worshiping him. Now the man walks to the window. There's something in his hand. His head covers the sun as the house owner looks confused. The woman is still praying. The umbrella is open. We now know that he was opening the umbrella in the previous page. He uses the fumes from the exhaust to lift him towards the sun. Heading over the seas, he is still achieving his dream until the umbrella breaks and he is sent hurtling towards water. But he saved by a boat. He keeps pointing towards the sun. The sailors throw up their hands in frustration or confusion. One of the sailors even slaps his forehead at the ridiculousness of what we assume the protagonist is saying. He climbs up to the top of the ship's mast and dives towards the setting sun. He swims underwater towards a light surrounded by sea monsters, only to find a diver to tell him that there is no light here and to probably warn him that there's a giant squid above him. But a mermaid saves him! And she releases him on a giant wave, which is tossing him towards the light. Which happens to be the light of a lighthouse. He is running for the rising sun. He is climbing a giant crane as an airplane flies near it and jumps on the plane. Below him, we see an island. And the plane explodes for some reason. And he lands on that island with a plane wreck. He leaps towards the sun one last time and gets burnt and crashes down to earth where he wakes up his creator and we are reminded that this whole thing had been a dream. The guy at the desk, probably Mansreel, looks at us and smiles, letting us know that the whole thing was silly. Like Little Nemo, comics were grounding the fantastical in reality. They were showing that the artist knew these actions were impossible and could only happen in dreams. It was a cue to readers to wake up, that their trip to the impossible was over, and that it was time to snap back to reality. But what was the story about? On the surface, it was about an artist who dreamed of getting to the sun. But is there a deeper meaning to this all? Notice that it's a technology that's always failing the man, and that other humans are always the ones stopping him from reaching his goal. The closest he got to the sun was when he was in nature, and as menacing as the sea creatures may have looked, none of them seemed to harm him or hold back the man. Can we read something deeper into all of this? How about when he finally gets to the sun and gets burnt? Does that make us reconsider the actions of the humans around him? What do you think? Franz Mansreel's wordless novels were forgotten by most of today's artists and are mentioned only in circles of comic historians. The lack of words may have helped the stories have a more universal appeal, but they also stopped them from being adapted to films and shows like the other comics we mentioned this week were. Mansreel's wordless novels were the precursor to the graphic novel, and that's his main contribution to this course. But, there were other wordless novels that appeared in the United States, made by a man who saw Mansreel's technique and decided to duplicate it in America, where Mansreel's books weren't being published. More on that man, next video. Questions to contemplate. Wordless novels are undeniably sequential art, but the art of comics is usually seen as mixing words with pictures to tell a story. Does any piece of sequential art used to tell a story deserve to be called a comic? Or does the lack of words make it a different medium? What age range do you think the sun's primary demographic is? What do you think the sun is really about? What interpretations can you get out of it?